If you don't get any further in this video than the little intro I'm about to shoot, if you've dealt with blight before with your tomato plants or fungal infections or bacterial leaf spot, leave a solution to bounce back in the comments down below because I'm tired of looking at tomato plants like this every single year and it's enough to make me want to quit. got home from work a little bit ago and it's one of the nicer days we've had in a while. If you've been watching the channel you know that it's been super rainy lately so uh, the days like this have been kind of few and far between. Whoa just got dive bombed by some hummingbirds. So if it's been nice out when I get home I like to come outside with Emma. Just hanging out back there. And kind of going to the garden see what we can get to harvest for dinner tonight. I think we might have some zucchini. There's probably some broccoli ready to go as well. Let's see what's out here. What do you see? What is it? A frog. Yeah, where is he? Right here, little plant. Plant. Some zucchini. Whoa, that's a big one. Couple zucchini from the garden today. Uh, I don't see any summer squash over there. Really this time of year, I'd be hoping for a lot more, but with all the rain that we've had, just getting anything at this point um, is, is good. I mean, we did really well with cabbage. We did really well with broccoli, uh, but a lot of the other stuff, I mean, our entire first planting of cucumbers just died. The plants withered away, they got drowned. So, to kind of bounce back and have some squash producing at this point, I'll, I'll take it. Show everyone what we got. What are those? Broccoli. And what are you holding? Um, zucchini. Zucchinis? Yeah. They look good. Are we gonna eat them for dinner? Yeah. So earlier this year, we endeavored, well, let me go back actually. For the last few years, We've been growing our tomatoes in our raised beds and things have gone pretty well. The issues that we've run into though involve mostly blight, which if you've never dealt with blight before, um, it is a terminal illness for tomatoes. Uh, it's picked up from the soil. It can live in your soil. And if a tomato branch touches the ground, it can pick up the blight and that blight tends to travel up the tomato plant and eventually it kills off the whole plant and if you're lucky you can get tomatoes off of that plant before the entire tomato is killed it tends to thrive in moist conditions uh, conditions where plants are touching each other conditions where plants don't have the ability to dry out and conditions where the plants are watered from above all things that we knew were not great for tomato plants but we kind of continued on doing in our garden beds despite knowing that they were bad. And it's gone all right. We have had decent harvests from our tomato plants despite having this blight issue, just because we were able to plant faster growing varieties that were able to give us a harvest before the blight got too bad. This year though, I said I wanted to beat the blight and I made the decision to grow all of our tomato plants in five gallon buckets, pots that I filled with soil purchased from offsite that was a mix of compost and potting soil, so it was good. I drilled holes in the buckets and was hoping that by doing that and moving everything to the front of the house where we get a lot of sun, we could beat the blight. And unfortunately, that was not the case. Let me introduce you to the tomato crop of 2021 here at the Mindful Homestead. Here we are, take a gander at the majesty that is our tomato crop. This one did especially well. And here, here is my overachiever. Here in the backyard, it's more of the same. This is a yellow pear, which does have some fruit on it. 
It's actually got a lot of fruit on it. And some's ripening, which is good. Now we've got a tomato plant here. Withered. Plants back here. Withered. Almost no foliage on those. What went wrong with our tomato plants this year? From the research that I've done and what I've seen on what's happening with our plants, I think it was something different than the blight we've been dealing with in the past, which has lived in the soil. Blight is something that's not very easily transmitted from region to region if you don't have it already in your soil. And as I mentioned, the soil that I was using in these pots was new soil. It came from bags. It was not from our land. It was not from anywhere that it had tomatoes grown on it before. It was composted soil, potting soil mix that's typically sterilized at heat to kill any microorganisms, parasites, uh, illnesses, diseases. The soils that you buy in the bag, while not technically alive, they are typically sterile. And the nice thing there is you don't have to worry about those soil blends containing viruses and diseases that can hurt your crops. So if we didn't have blight in the soil that we used, how did all these tomatoes end up dying on us? If you look here at this plant up close, it's a little telling at what's going on. These lesions on the fruit here tell us that we're not dealing with your typical blight, whether early or late, and that we're dealing with a little bit something else. Those fungal blights won't attack the fruit of your plants. So while you may have a plant that dies early and isn't going to give you as much fruit as a plant that wasn't infected, you can still get a very fruitful harvest off of your plants. Any fruit that's on the plant at the time of the infestation generally will ripen up and you can eat it or process it into sauce or, or ketchup or whatever you want to do with it. You can generally use those tomatoes as, as you would have with a healthy plant. You can even see in these plants right here that were affected later, uh, the infection started over on that side of the deck and spread to these plants that the fruit here is largely unaffected by what we're dealing with. What I think we're dealing with here is a bacterial leaf spot disease versus a septoria leaf spot, which is fungal, or either the early or late blight, which are also fungal. This is a bacterial infection and it's not necessarily picked up from the soil. It can live in the soil, much like the blights do. Being that all these soils were sterilized though, I'm pretty sure that this sort of thing was, was carried in possibly by an insect or uh, some sort of rodent that maybe was on these things. We do have chipmunks around and I'm pretty sure that it didn't come from the soil, even though we did kind of, we didn't prune these as, a, as crazy as I would have if they were in the garden. But honestly, this twig of a tomato right here is about as sad as it could possibly get. I don't know any other way to look at this thing. I mean, it's still standing up under its own power. The tomato that's on it is ripening and there's not much of any of that scar tissue on the tomato from the infection. We may be able to use this tomato for something. Once that bacteria got onto the plants that we had on the deck with all the rain that we've had, that only exacerbated the problem and the tomato plants really didn't stand a chance. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I really like growing tomatoes, even though I'm not a huge fan of eating tomatoes, uh, especially raw ones, cooked ones don't bother me so much. I've gotta say this whole thing has just kind of soured the taste in my mouth for growing tomatoes to the point where I don't know what I wanna do because I, I don't, I, the space in the garden that we've grown tomatoes in the past is a no-go. The blight's there and it's just gonna keep coming back. Obviously growing in containers is the way to go, but now that we filled all these pots with dirt and that dirt now has the bacteria in it, we can't really grow tomatoes in those pots again without having that bacteria on our plants. We'd have to let those pots sit. I think it's three years is what you need to do. I guess what I'd really like to figure out in this video is if other people out there have had issues with leaf spot on their tomatoes, uh, whether it's bacterial, whether it's uh, fungus related, either septoria leaf spot or uh, early or late blight, and what you've done about it to kind of bounce back and grow tomatoes. Cause we're now 
we're three years in on, on really making a go at growing a good crop of tomatoes that we can have enough for canning. We can have enough to use for salads. Uh, we can really, you know, just enjoy them raw. Jackie likes them raw. And three years in a row of failure to the point where this year, I thought we were good. Like 15 five gallon buckets, completely virgin soil from tomato plantings. I thought we were good to go and nothing. Like we'll maybe get enough Roma tomatoes where I can make like a sauce out of it, but I'm not going to be canning any of it. It's just going to be a sauce that I make and we use it over the course of a couple of days. There's not going to be enough there to get any meaningful canning operation done. And it's kind of just, it kicked me in the head a little bit. So please, if you know what to do to grow a decent tomato and come back from blight, let me know because this right here, I'm getting tired of looking at tomato plants year after year that look like this and it's making me not want to grow them anymore at all thanks for watching everybody if you like what you saw make sure to hit the subscribe button down below we'd love to have you as part of the channel as always have a great day bye, bye.